yes morning students good morning good morning, good morning. okay so today's class uh, as it is a continuation of module 2 so i'm dealing with the concept of uh, list okay so can anybody tell me uh, what we had dealt in the last class as a part of a recap um, what all did you see in the last class about lists anybody recall list okay list in list what did you uh, learn or what did we see how to create a list how to create a list right then what else did you learn forward and backward approach backward approach or uh, we call it as indexing right how that is which is a part of uh, uh, getting individual values in the list with indexing right and lists are mutable which we saw what is what do you mean by that lists are mutable it can be changed it can be changed the elements can be changed once it is created yes so it, be, it is possible for us to change the list or modify the list once it is created by using the concept of indexing and lastly we had seen the list length how do you get the list length using which function students <sighs> Okay, length function, and uh, as a part of demo, which I had not covered it, so I'll just cover it today. So today's agenda is with respect to list, uh, some of the operations that we can perform on list. So in your exam, if they ask you, uh, list the different types of uh, operations on list. So what should you list, right? That's what you will see. Then traversing list. How exactly we traverse the list? So you will all know how do you traverse an array. So how do you traverse an array? Okay, traverse means to say visit the Each array. Each and every element. Index variable. How? How? In, how? You are using indexing. Using indexing. Um, if I have to print the elements of the array, uh, what will you use? I am just talking. You will use a for loop. Isn't it? So I think you know the syntax. How exactly for i equals to zero, the index starting from zero till where i less than n. So where n is the size of the array there, right? So we have seen that in your previous uh, sessions. Uh, we'll see how to traverse a list. Okay, then followed with list methods, and then the demo. Okay, which we'll be covering both yesterday's and today's class. So moving on to the list operation. So when I talk about this, there is a lot of uh, uh, differences when we talk about list operations, list methods, traversing a list. So the question when it gives you these key terms, you have to write these answers. You cannot mess it up. Okay. So list operations, when we talk about, there are two operations that can be performed on the list. One is the list concatenation. The other one is list replication. So you have already seen this with respect to one more data type. Could you recall? You have already seen this two operations: concatenation and replication. String. With respect to string. string. Okay. Similarly, we have with respect to list also. Very simple as it is. So can anybody tell me how do I perform concatenation operation? Which operator should use it? Plus. Yes. Addition operator and how do you perform replication? Star operator. Okay, is that is your multiplication operator. Similarly, here we have to use plus and star on the list also. Okay, so what does a plus operator do? Very simple. Very simple here. The plus operator will combine the two lists which are acting as an operand to it. Okay left operand and the right operand, the two lists which have been passed to plus will be combined and it will create a new list value. New list value, remember this, right? So it will take two list elements and it'll come back, oh, sorry, it will combine and give you a list again back. So when you combine two strings, your answer, your result is what? Some other data type you mm -hmm. can... List. No, 
no no when you combine two strings or concatenate two strings you get any other data type or it is a string only string same data similarly here also when you combine two lists the resultant is again list itself okay the next we have the star operator so very simple it is star operator you know it replicates that many number of times so the star operator will again use two operands where the left operand is a list and what is your right operand students what is your right operand for it star it is an integer value so you cannot give any floating point value no star takes to the left a list or a string as of now what we know and towards the right it takes an integer value okay wherein to replicate wherein the operation is to replicate the list what do you mean by replicate very simple again it is returning a list again by repeating the operand which has been given to you for how many times n times that means to say based on your integer value are you understanding students yes yes, yes ma'am yes, okay ma so i would just like to demonstrate the same before anyways put it in the slide this is demonstrated um can you all see this a notebook students yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma it's visible yes visible yes, yes ma'am ma okay can anybody tell me what does this create an empty list creates an empty list yes so you all know that this will now create an empty list okay suppose say i give you the type function type ls okay so you all know the output will be what here it is of type what list list so if you uh, perform in ideally you will get the answer is list, list in Blank single list. anyway it's not a problem fine now how do you create list using the a static list how do you create static list student someone can in the square brackets uh, the element should be given it's in the square brackets element should be given give same elements or different types of elements or mixed anything what can i give is this correct can i give a list like this yes ma'am yes ma'am okay can i give a list like this Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Can have anything, okay? So, um, creating a list, okay? So now the list is created here. So I'll just print this ls one for me, okay? What what is the answer? Do you expect here? Two, three, four. Ah. Oh. I and four in what in what within square, square brackets. Square bracket. So within the square brackets, it is just printed. Similarly, I'll create one more list like this. Okay. Um. Okay. Fine. Can I do this? Can I have the? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It is there. So now. what i'll just try to do here is um print okay rather than print i will just give it like this ls1 plus ls2 can anybody guess me the answer of ls3 isc csc is 3 concatenation square bracket 234 hi 4 comma 6 then isc csc okay what does this do so ls3 is now what what see it is an assignment uh, operation you can see there so what does it do it will execute which is on the right hand side first and then stores it in your 
the LHS, isn't it? So what is plus doing for me? Plus does very simple. It will perform the job of concatenating and returns a new list after the concatenation. So remember, list concatenation will return a new list. Okay. So what is the answer now? If I execute, what answer do I expect? So I want the new list which is created in this way. 2, 3, 4, high, 4, 6. At the end, it even concatenates CSC as well as the IAC. Yes, students? Yes? Okay. Does LS1 change or it is the same? Same. Same. Does LS2 gets modified or it is the same? Same. same. So it doesn't get modified. Only thing is it will take the elements which are the present in the list concatenates and makes one more new list. Is that clear, students? Yes? Yes, ma? Yes, ma. Okay. Next, what I'll do is just look at this. LS2, right? Look at this and carefully give me the answer. Should not make mistake. Okay. LS2 is equal to LS2 star. Three. What what will this do? It will print IAC and CSC three times. Uh, string. It will print string. Replication. Okay. So what is the content of now LS two? Someone can tell. What is the IAC CSC? It will be printed thrice, ma. I, I don't want the printing. I want the contents of LS2. See, LHS will be executed. RHS will be executed first. So LS2 star 3. So ISC, CSC within the square brackets star 3. I want the answer now. What does this portion give me? This RHS, what does it give me? Students. RHS results in what? Within the square bracket, ISC, CSC, ISC, CSC, again, ISC. Okay. So within the square, it exactly means this. I have given double quotes. Okay. It exactly means this. ISC, CSC, star 3. Means to say, it will now again create a list where the contents will be ISC, CSC, ISC, CSC, ISC, CSC. So this will be repeated how many times, students? Three, Three times. times. Okay. So what I'll do? Print now LS2. Okay. Can you see the answer? ISC CSC, ISC CSC, ISC CSC. See, it is not a string. Remember, you are replicating the list. The elements will be taken as a, a, a single element. Repeat it thrice. Very simple as it is. So is now LS2 modified in this case for me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It is being modified. Is that clear, students? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma now, len. How do I use len? Len of what? Say I want LS2. LS2. So can I find a len of LS2? Gives me what answer, students, quickly? Six. 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 You can see the length of that is 6. Yes. Now, LS2 or LS2 only I'll give. Okay. Can anybody give the answer for this? CSC. CSC. 0, 1, 2. IS. ISC. ISC. The forward indexing starts with 0. Remember, 0, 1, 2, 3. Oh, so the answer is ISC. Don't make mistakes, isn't it? ISC. Next, LS2 of minus 4. LS2 of minus 4. Give me the answer for LS2 of minus 4. ISC. ISC. How is it ISC again? Starts from minus one. Minus, minus one, minus two, minus three, then the minus four. Yes. This I will see. Is it clear? Is it clear, students? Yes, yes. ma'am. Okay. 
So we have the list of operations here. In the same examples. Can anybody guess what does it print? LS1 plus LS2. Print LS1 plus LS2. 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 7 written square square brackets. Square brackets. Because plus returns a new list concatenating, concatenating the elements present in the operands, which are the list now. Okay. Right. Next. LS1. How about this? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Within the square bracket. Yes. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Within the square brackets. Understood that it is separated by commas. So I do not have to tell you every time. Okay. Guess the answer for the students. Zero four times. Okay. So it prints a list which contains how many elements? Four elements. Four elements. Okay. So which the elements are now zero separated by comma. So don't think that giving zero inside the list is treated as an empty list. No. What is an empty list? When it is simply with it, without no elements, square no elements. That means with empty square brackets. Empty square brackets is a list. Sometimes in MCQs, what happens? One of the answer is um, uh, empty square brackets, right? Right. So one of the answer might be uh, empty square brackets. So you might think, oh, zero. Zero means empty. No, zero means it contains one element called as zero there. Are you understanding, students? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Suppose if it was empty, what would be the answer? Zero was not there, students. What is my empty, answer? Empty. empty list only. It would be an empty list only. Nothing is there. What to repeat? Again, it returns an empty list. There. Is that clear? Yes? Yes. Okay. Next is now um, traversing a list. Um, so this is very important concept in order to write programs. Traversing means to say that you will have to uh, read the elements one by one and perform some tasks. Okay, you might ask me, ma'am, anyways, indexing is there. I will do it. But when you use indexing, the length of the code slightly becomes more. Right? Suppose say I will tell you a uh, list has been given like ls is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Uh, create a new list such that Every element is multiplied by 2, 1 into 2, 2 into 2, 3 into 2, 4 into 2. So each time you will have to write the code. So instead of that, you can traverse the list in a better fashion by using the uh, constructs available. Okay. So a list basically can be traversed using a for loop more easier than while for loop becomes a task in a good way. Suppose say traversing again, you can do it in two, uh, what do you tell, uh, scenarios. One is simply you have to use element in the list. So based on the two tasks, right? Simply I have to just use the each element in the list. I don't want to modify. Remember, I just want to use it. So in that case, just use the for loop and in operator very simple use that's what i mean to say i have bolded it use each element in the list okay so how do we write the code the code goes like this so i have taken a simple program to print the elements in a list okay so how do you print the elements in a list if i ask you to write a program without you knowing for loop how will the how will you print the elements in the list Print, print LS of zero, LS, LS of one. LS of zero, then LS of one, next line, print LS of two, print LS of three. And you should write till the end based on the length of the list. So it will, it might vary. Suppose if the list has 100 elements, how many lines, how many print statements you should write? 100. 100. Okay, your task should be now simpler. 
Okay, so your program will work in three lines if you use for loop there. So how do we print? So first, I have a list like this. Okay, so I take a static list as of now. It's already present. 34 high to 3 and minus 5. The next what I'll do is, I'll write a for loop. Just look at this. For, which is the keyword. And what is item to me? It's a variable. Variable. And what is in? In also is a keyword. Keyword. I, I have told you what is the in operator does. So what does the in operator does? It checks for every element in the list. list. So when I use inside the for loop, you all know that it will traverse, right? So every item in the list, isn't it? Let us see what happens. Now, just tell me, in the every iteration, item contains what all items, sorry, what all um, points to which element in LS now? The LS is the next operator, next operand, sorry. 34. First, on the first iteration, item points to 34. Four. Next iteration, high. High. Next iteration, 2, two comma three. Three. 3. And next iteration, minus, minus 5. five. What should I get? Am I audible? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma you were not audible. Okay. Uh, uh, what should I give in the for class now? Print ls of item. Mm. No, just print item. Print item because item is now pointing to each and every element in the list. Right? Just print of item. That's sufficient. Is that clear? Is it clear, yes, students? Yes. Okay. I'll just show you in the visualizer so that you will know what does item. See, there's a lot of uh, uh, differences when they are used. So, what happened to this now? One second. <clears throat> uh, whatever I said, whether it is the same, we'll just check. Let's look at the Tracing part. What happened to this? Server error. Infinite loop. Oh no. Let's look at this, this portion of the screen. Just try to concentrate. You see the red line, which is at the first line. What will happen in the memory, computer memory? Can you just see, students? Can you just see, ma'am? Can you just see here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is now, can you just see that uh, the arrow? It is now pointing to a yes, location wherein how it is stored. In terms of indexing, 0, 1, 2, 3. And you can see now, zero at the index 0, we have 34, high. And at the index 2, you had list. Can you see again? So list cannot be stored here. Again, separate memory location will be allotted. 
right which is of type list can you see that students yes ma'am yes and which is at the index 0 and which is at the index 1 2 and 3 so at the index 3 you have minus 5 yes yes students yes ma'am yes ma'am just look at the looping construct can you see now the item what does item contain 34 Four. It now contains the first element. So print item. Again, the control goes back. What does now the item contain? Hi. Hi. So again, it goes back. Sorry, it prints. Sorry, prints. Hi. Again, it goes back. Next, what does the item contain? Two comma. Two comma. Comma three. See, it cannot hold the list, so it will just point to this location. right right so there is something which you have to know here why this this scenario is happening we will see that in the further classes right next it will print to comma 3 next what does item contain minus 5 minus 5 yes and it prints minus 5 what happens uh, one after printing minus 5 no elements it are there so uh, it has traversed the entire element in the list Hence, it will come out of the uh, program of the loop. That means to the it will execute. Sorry, it will exit the program. Understood, students? So whatever I have told is how the computer represents. You can see how the computer represents. You can see the indexing here. You can see it is of object of type list. Remember, all that you create. See, a list is an object of type list. Are you understanding? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Fine. The next way of doing it. Suppose say you just used it here, okay, using fine. But say you want to um, modify it, access the uh, element and try to modify it. So then this will not work much, okay. Suppose say I want to uh, multiply each element with the two or something. I have to do modification. So in that case, this will not work for you. So you will have to do. something more so you will have to again use the for loop with the range function along with the len function so you have to use the for loop with range and len okay so i'll just display the code just try to analyze what it is doing okay ls is equal to 1 2 3 4 i have not given the aim because i want you to analyze okay Can anybody guess what does this do? It finds the length of the list ls. Okay, first it will find the length of the list. So what is the length of the list according to me? According four. to four. Four. Then what is range of four generating? What is four generating? Zero. 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 Two. Three. Zero. One. Two. Three. So it will again generate a list. Which is zero, one, two, and three. Yes, yes, students. Yes, Now, just guess what is this zero, one, two, three with respect to my list? It's an index value of index right. value of my uh, list, which I am trying to use, isn't it? It is the Index value of the list. Okay, now I'll just write the code here, which goes like this. Ls of i is equal to ls of i double star two. Can anybody guess what is this doing in every iteration? It prints every element twice in the list. No. It is double star. Double star. Power function, ma'am. Okay, power function. So, what does it do? What does this line compute for me? It doubles the value of the two. Okay. In the first iteration, square of each element. Okay. So now, is the list updated for me? Is ls updated or ls is same as one two three four? It's updated. Updated. Can you see here? 
list elements are being accessed so i want to access the elements which are there in the list and modify them so what did i do ls of i so ls of 0 i accessed 1 1 double star 2 so what is 1 double star 2 1 1 1 So next, next element two. Four. Yes, sub two double star two. Four. Four. And three double star two. Nine. Nine. Double. So I am trying to print the uh, yes. of each element present in the list, wherein my list is updated. Updated, right? So print ls. What is the answer here? One four nine nine sixteen. Okay, can you just tell me now? Um, can you just tell me now whether writing this only, like this only? Suppose say I will do like this. Item star star two. Will I get the same answer? using this kind of a looping yes ma'am yes ma'am okay will i get the same answer i want the list to be modified will i get no, no ma'am the list will not modify the list will not modify rather it will print the square of elements in the list do you all agree with me yes ma'am yes ma'am but the list remains the same right one second why is the net slow here okay so you can see here item is one initially it gets 1 2 3 4 so item is one print item star star two it will print one only but ls will not be modified you can see the ls doesn't get modified here right again it will go again it will access it will print the square of two then print the square of three and four but ls remains the same it is one two three four only yes but when i have to modify my code so it's better or modify my list So it is to be used in this fashion. So it is left to the user how you can use it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just look at the flow now. So you can see, can you see the value of i here? I is zero. So I am trying to extract the index of the list. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So. Next, what is the value of i? Zero. Initially, it is zero. Next, one. Okay, ls of i is equal to ls of i double star two. Can you just observe this? Just observe how two gets changed there. Can you see? Two yes. Got... Okay. Nine, and then sixteen. Yes, you can see that the list has been changed. So it is left to the user. which kind of a for loop are you supposed to use okay let me give you a question now i want to print a program okay someone can tell me the code program to find sum of elements in a list tell me which for loop will you use this is a list sum i just want to find sum of elements first for loop will you use or the second one you are using it or you are want to modify it we are using it you are just using so which i can use first for loop or the second for loop version Okay, tell me the code at least. What for loop should I do? Right. Find. Just first for loop, man. Using okay. just in. For. Item in what? 
ls ls so for ex just extract every item present in your list then submit it what is the code here the code sum is equal to sum plus ls of oh, i okay sum is equal to sum plus ls of i item ls of item i think you are not extracting the index here you are see remember very simple if you use range function len function for loop variable will contain the index if you just use ls the list name and the item it will point to the item in the list very simple it is don't get confused okay so what should i do, do here sum is equal to sum plus item item enough that's enough Mount the initial is sum equal to zero. Mark. Yes, yes. What error you will get here? Oh my God! Not as slow. Yes. What error can we expect here, students? So many. Sum is a function. Function. Let me check. What is the keyword? Syntax error. Fine. Okay. Sum equals to zero. Or item in a list. Look at that. Item contains every element in the list here. Okay. That's the reason. For this, I use item. For there, I use i. Okay, so item goes on. Sum also gets manipulated. You can see ls is the same. It did not modify, and it prints the sum. And sum value is now what, students? Ten. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Suppose if I ask you to write the code using range function, then what will you write? For i in range of length of ls. Range of Length of ls. Okay. What should you write? L. Instead of item, ls of uh, i. Ls of i because here i indicates the index of the list. I indicates the index. There's only two ways, yeah. So there's no much complication. Either ways also you can write the program. Okay. So it is all left to your convenience. But you should know how it is. Yes. Can you see? Just look at this. Look at this. Can you now see? I will now contain zero. Means it is acting as the uh, variable to the index. It's an index variable, right? You will get the same answer here. Nothing much difference. Both are the same. Understood, students? Is that clear? Traversing the list. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, both ways you can write, but use it in a right way, appropriate way. Okay, followed with the the next one is the list methods. Okay, so what is this method? So you might ask me, ma'am, what is the method here? So method is nothing but again similar to a Python function, right? But it must be called on an object or a value. so like a function you can simply cannot write simply independently right what i mean to say here is the method call will have a syntax like this first you have to write the object name then followed with what operator students dot operator operator then the method name then followed with the arguments but usually function how did you write just write the function name followed with the argument Argument. methods are not like that why because you all know that methods are nothing but what functions defined functions defined inside where where are the methods defined 
methods are nothing but the functions defined inside the class remember so when you have anything inside the class how do you access it with the help of object object okay and the dot operator so remember in python we all know that everything is an object yes everything is an object including your data types right they are all the objects there so similarly here every data type will have its own set of methods which you have to use it right similarly with list data type we have several methods for various operations so we'll see what are the list methods that i have so i have two list methods one called as append one called as insert to perform values to the list adding values to the list so append and insert method next we have finding a value in a list with the index method remember they are not functions there is two different categories sometimes in the exams they'll ask you list functions list methods these are these are the list methods remember then sorting the values using the method sort reversing the values using the method reverse and then removing the values from the list with the pop method there are several methods out of which i have taken few methods today's for today's class what does append do any idea students what does append it adds the, it adds the, the last of the list okay it is basically a method used to add the elements at the end of the list yes okay so it is a method used to add a new element at the end of the list new element precisely a single element very much important which you have to know suppose say a list is like this ls is equal to 1 2 3 and you should now know how to invoke this append method very important so how to invoke this append method you should first write what object so what what is now the object that i am working on ls ls the list ls dot append in the small parenthesis give the element which you want to append very simple okay remember when i apply this methods the modification will be reflected on my object are you understanding yes or yes, no yes it will be reflected can anybody just tell me what is the answer when i do this operations on my list ls 1 2 3 5 so it will take up one single element the end of the list remember the invoking list whatever you have or the invoking object whatever you have it will be modified very important right it will be modified so it will not remain the same what you had okay let us now do the same here ls is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 okay so how do i call the method uh, append ls dot append okay hi is that clear students ls dot append yes yes what is the answer here students 1 two, 1 2 3 5 34 okay 1 2 3 hi Thirty-four. Remember, the list invoking list will be uh, changed, and remember this point also that the append does not return anything. Does not return anything. Rather than that, it returns what? What does the append return? Any idea? None. Not return any updated string. Uh, updated list. Sorry. Rather than that, what does it return? Append returns what student? Yes. What what what? It does not return anything. 
it does i mean to say append does not return the updated list no rather than that what does it return usually all functions a new list method returns by default what if it does not return none, none. none. so it returns none remember okay so what do you expect here rs contains what none. none remember append method will does not return any updated list no it does not return rather than that it returns none is that clear is that clear students yes ma'am suppose say i want to add two elements in my list let us not take this okay i'll add like this hello world okay one is this i want to add two elements in my list at the end will this work no mm -hmm. okay you can now say here you get an warning message called as a type error why type error because append takes exactly how many arguments One element. One element to be inserted at the end. So I cannot take append to insert more than one element. Okay. So what I have an option here is I have an option so called as extend. So what I can do is if there are more than one elements to be inserted at the end, first create a list. Okay. Just create a list. Fine. After creating the list, just call a method called as extend, which takes that argument as a list. Can anybody guess now? Extend does what? It adds the two lists together. Okay. Where? Where it appends the elements of the list argument to the end of invoking list so remember it appends the elements of the list which is given as in the argument to the end of the list so it will not don't get confused the answer will not be a list at the end right it will take the elements and appends one by one at the end of the invoking list so now can anybody guess the answer of ls so ls was like this 1 2 3 hi 34 what is the answer now ls answer 1 2 3 hi 34 hello 45.6 okay so print ls so remember what does it print see don't get confused extend will not add the list no it will take the elements add it at the end of the invoking list can you see 1 2 3 hi 34 23.4 four. okay here we have added 23.4 then hello and then 45.6 is that clear students yes yes ma'am okay yes. so that was about the extend so this extend takes a list as an argument and all the elements in the list are added at the end of the invoking list added at the end okay see now can anybody give the answer for this snippet code 1 2 3 5 6 carefully see the code 5 6 1 2 3 5 6 1 2 3 very very careful see uh, in fact even uh, the other day when i attended one workshop i made a mistake assuming that Uh, looking at every time we think that this is ls1 this is ls2 the slight uh, swapping will lose marks isn't it right the very simple question even i lost marks uh, just assuming always this is ls1 and this is ls2 so what's the answer 5 6 1 2 3 within a list 5 6 1 2 3 okay. which is within a list yes fine Is that clear, students? Okay, I think I'll end up with this. It's already time up. Okay, insert method. So what is this insert method? Is see what did append and extend do? Where where the elements got inserted, students? At the, At the end, end of the end list. Of the list. Okay, you want to insert um, 
uh, somewhere in between, isn't it? In that case, you have to use insert method. You can insert a value at a particular index in the list. Very simple there. Okay. So what is that you have to do is it takes two arguments. Now the insert first argument is my index value. Okay. And the second argument, as you all know, it is the new value. Very simple. Okay. Again, the invoking list only will be modified. It will not again return anything. Okay. Let's see, look at the example quickly. Just tell me the answer so that I will, I have some questions for you. Hmm. Give me the answer for this. What is uh, this? Hi will be added after three. Yes. So the invoking list here is ls, right? And hi is the element to be inserted, which is at the index one. So three, hi, five, ten. Yes. Is that clear? Students? index Pardon me? Hello? Yes, yes Telma. There uh, one comma I is a normal index starts from zero. So I should be inserted after five moments. Your voice is not audible, yeah. Once again. Ma'am, index start from huh. zero, no ma'am. Yes. There one comma I is there, so uh I should be inserted after the five moment. There we to you told it is after three. Yes, index starts with zero. Yes, after index five. No, ma. It is telling you the index for the new value. It is not after or before. Okay, okay, ma'am. Index for the new value. One gives okay the index for the new value. So at the index one, I should put high. So this will be shift. Oh, okay. Get it, ma'am. Ma ma uh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, ma uh, uh, will it work for negative indexing also? Think so. Yes. We'll check it out. Think so. Yes. I'm not check. Let me check. Okay. Okay. Where does it get inserted? Where does it get inserted in this? Inserted what? After three, four, four I. I. Inserted five. index two. Index uh, two after four point five. Point five. Four point five. Okay. Let me execute the same. Yes. Okay. So we'll uh, execute them and ask me whether it works for negative when I'm not right. Let us try whether it works. Okay. What shall we give at negative index minus one? So minus one means it should be inserted as? World after world. Last That's element. Fine. Okay. Um, okay. What do I give? World is okay. Let's see whether it works. Yes. How come? Minus one is three, four point. It is working, but there's something wrong, isn't it? With respect to negative indexing, uh, something is missing. Okay, uh, what is that you observe with respect to negative indexing, students? Students, it should have printed after world, ma. Huh? Before the index value. Before the index value. Okay. Print ls. So in this case, where does this go? 
were like after high after high okay let's see whether it is the same yes after high okay so to conclude a very good question it's a eye opening question even now i'm not aware of the same when it is a positive index it is at that particular index okay but when it is a negative so backward if you traverse from the backward minus 1 minus 2 after minus 2 it will be printed i mean it will be in, uh, inserted understood students this was minus 1 yes world was at minus 1 i is was at minus 2 understanding right after minus 2 the index it will just print but how is this interpreted okay anyways i'll just get back with the negative index of insert okay list methods okay fine so the rest i'll continue in the next class we time up want to waste fine i have few questions to you can you all see this yes sir okay yes, someone ma'am. just tell me what is this what MT, is the empty empty list. list empty list very good how would you assign the value hello as a third value in the list stored in the variable named spam suppose spam contains spam dot insert of 3 comma be careful third value insert 2 comma hello okay someone said uh, to come different answers one final answer insert 3 comma hello very read the full question 1 comma ma'am 1 how would you assign i'm asking you assign not in spam is equal to span of 2 uh, equal to Ah, someone is right. Like is spam it? of two equal to hello. Hello, in single quotes hello. Try to understand. Assign. Assign means to say I just want to modify here. Okay, it's not insert. I'm not asking you to insert the value hello. Assign the value hello as the third value in the list. Okay, the spam. So the third value is now six, right? Understanding. So, what is the answer here? Spam of two. Two equal to hello. Hello. Okay. Fine. So be careful. For the following three questions, let's say spam contains the list A, B, C, D. Can anybody give me the answer for this spam? This. silent all went silent students are you all there yes ma'am yes ma'am just tell me what is the value of this what does this get evaluated okay um in the square mm-hmm. spam of 3 spam of 3 uh, how oh. justify Er, ma'am, three is a string. Okay. So when it get to multiply to two, uh-huh. oh, that bracket is for uh, three star two. Okay, yes. so that thirty three is uh, converted into int. Yes. So what is the answer that, for me in uh, uh, single quotes three star two? What is my answer? It will be thirty three. Again, a string. Oh. Ah uh, yes, ma'am. It is a string. Okay. That's okay. why we are converting it to int. Okay. Then thirty-three by eleven. It will be uh, since it is it returns float value three point zero. I think so. What you think so? Ah, uh, thirty-three by eleven, three point zero. Okay, thirty-three by eleven. Three point zero. 
Okay. Because in Python, the uh, this normal ah. division returns float value, no ma'am. That's why. Okay. Yes, yes. So spam yeah. of three point zero. So what do I get? The answer. D. I think D. error. Error. Okay. Because index has to be integer, not float. Index has to be an integer. Very good. Now let us see. Okay, spam. A, B, B. What was that? Um, spam off. I'll just give print only. Spam off. Integer. In three into two by eleven. Two by eleven. Okay, let's see what I get. Yes, you put the answer there. List indices must be integers, not float. Forget about slices. I have not told you about it. Not float. So very simple. You might come half the way and stop as he did. Um, Thirty-three. Okay. See now. Um, this star two. Will give me the answer called as P three int of P three will give me the answer so called as what students thirty three thirty three by eleven. This is where you go wrong. So what do you assume normally thirty three by eleven? What is the answer? Three. So you three assume that it is three, and you will tell me spam of three is what zero one two three D, which is actually wrong. You can now see. The indices, as I told you in the last class, should be always an integer. It cannot be a float. 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 Friends, yes, definitely. When I try to use spam of three point zero, it throws me an error. What kind of an error, students? Type error. Type error. So you should know this. Okay. Anyways, a spam of minus one. D. Uh, minus one is what, ma? D. D. Very simple. Okay, this app slicing I have not told you. Anyways, um, see this example. Okay, bacon is a list which contains these elements. Just give me the answer for this. Bacon dot append ninety nine. What will happen? Ninety nine will be appended after true. After true, very simple. Okay, then what are the operators for list concatenation and list replication? Addition and uh, addition and uh, okay. What is the difference between append and insert methods? Append, append and append used to add to the end of the list, and the insert uh, we can add it in the particular mentioned index. Mention mentioned index. So, uh, insert with respect to negative. I'll come back to you all in the next class. Okay. Any doubts, ma? No, ma. No, ma. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for spending ma time. The notes, ma. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I will send it. Start reading from your um, uh, what is that? PPTs only. Okay. So it um, is again. PPTs have not uploaded, ma'am. Like only introduction PPTs have uploaded, ma'am. Module one PPTs I have uploaded, ma. Yes, ma'am, it's there. Yes, ma'am, it's there. there. It's there. Everything is there. Uh, all videos till till uh, yesterday. PPT of second module is not there, but all videos till yesterday is uploaded. PPT of first module is uploaded. Okay, PPT of second module also I'll upload it by today evening. Once I'm done with tomorrow's class, so I'll upload that. Um, Anything else? Start reading from your uh, PPTs. If you, whatever PPTs I have given, I'll again convert that to uh, a Word document. Okay, students. Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so, ma'am, syllabus up to where we are having for the internal list students. methods. List okay. methods. Uh, I have to complete two or three more, four, four to five methods. Okay, till there. You can learn. Hmm? Is that clear, ma'am? 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do not expect the um, answers to be a straightforward. I mean, the questions to be a straightforward one. So I'm telling you, you have to like tricky questions as I asked today. Understanding, so, like these tricky questions might come down to you. So you should be very careful and have patience in uh, solving the problems. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Okay, ma. Thank you so much. See you in the next class tomorrow's class. Tomorrow, as usual, third hour class will be there. Yeah, attend. Hmm? Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you.